today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. If it's a diss to Drake that you were with his baby mama before him, then it's more embarrassing because Drake was publicly with your girl before you. What up? It's your boy Trend Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Friday morning. I'm ready to get my weekend started. You guys know I normally have like a, a small show on Friday. I don't get too in depth because I'm just ready to get my weekend started. But today I got a good show for y'all. A lot of people are going at Drake, Toronto, Canada's own Drizzy. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Actually, hold on. Yeah, we're, I got two lead stories for you guys. We're going to talk about Drake. Uh, Metro Boomin and Future dropped their album last night at midnight. We got a lot of people going at Drake. Uh, that's our first lead story. Stay tuned for that. Trust me. Then our second lead story, we're going to talk about the reaction to OJ Simpson's death. Then we got quick news. We got Chris Brown and Jeezy. Chris Brown and Quavo are actually going at it. Then we're also going to talk about Jeezy. Then we got Speed News, Enderly Chopper, Usher, Nicki Minaj. We got two questions of the day. And then we're going to close out with sports news. Draymond Green uh, weighs in on if Bronny should be in the NBA or not. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, devices, or your radios up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. ASAP Rocky and The Weeknd seemingly take shots at Drake on Future and Metro's We Still Don't Trust You album. All right, that's just the headline on Neighborhood Talk. It's not seemingly, it is. They did take shots at your boy. Um, also, to note that's not in this headline, J. Cole was actually on the album as well. We're going to talk about that. He didn't diss Drake, but he was on the album. And so was Charlamagne the God. Nobody's actually talking about this. There's a second disc um with like i think six or seven tracks um and and he, he's uh it's charlemagne on his podcast brilliant idiots and he's talking about how amazing future was we all know that charlemagne is not the biggest fan of drake he wasn't dissing drake but the fact that he's on the album was horrible but anyways we'll talk about that uh let's get to the weekend first um i stayed up super late to digest this and get everything ready for you guys. Um, I'm actually really kind of disappointed because I stayed up thinking Kendrick and Drake were going to go at each other. That's what Joe Button alluded to, um, academics alluded to, and all these other sites. It's like, yo, tonight it's going down. Is Kendrick going to come out on um, We Still Don't Trust You? Is Pusher T going to come out? Is Drake going to drop? And it was really just We Still Don't Trust You album uh future metro booming and then a couple of these guys dissing so i am hype just because you know i had almost like no sleep trying to get this done but i'm actually literally in my soul disappointed they actually just got us to listen to the album of nothing but anyways let's take one thing at a time all right so first uh let's talk about the weekend um so i have the weekend's uh track here um so i'm going to read it to you obviously i can't play it um but they he said they could never diss my brother's baby when they got leaks in their operation. I thank God I never signed my life away. Their shooters making TikToks. The weekend this is Drake on Future and Metro Boomin's um, uh, All to Myself. So it's just super weird because the track is like, what a love track, whatever weekend is singing. And then he just says this where it's like, I don't know what it means of like they got leaks in their operation. That's probably a little dig that maybe to get Drake worried. You know, when people say that you hear like in the movies or in like when people are going to war, it's like, oh, they got a leak in their operation. You see that like in gangster movies all the time. It's like, what? We got a um whatever, we got a um we got a rat in our operation, right? You hear that in gangster movies all the time. So does he really have a leak in his operation or is he just trying to get Drake scared? Could be a warning shot, it could be real. And then he's saying, thank God I never say, uh, signed my life away. That's obviously, especially Canadians, we know that OVO, XO, uh, The weekend was supposed to sign to Drake. That was actually Drake's artist. And then, you know, uh, The weekend like, obviously ended up not signing to OVO. They were supposed to have a joint thing, OVO, XO, that never happened. But over time, it seems as if, like, they kind of made up. But then apparently there's some beef between some girl um, Bella Hadid, where Drake slept with the weekend's girlfriend, Bella Hadid, and that's why they don't like each other. And of course, Metro and Future, their whole album, both their albums, is trying to get every single person that doesn't like Drake to be on their album and come out. So this is just 
It's lo- it's making Drake look so like larger than life that there's all these people lined up to to diss Drake. Like you guys, it's stupid because you're making him seem. I'm about to say bigger than he already is, because but you can't because we already know he's number one. But to me, like this just makes Drake look even bigger. You know what I mean? Like even if you look in the comment sections, people are like, "All right, this is starting to get weird now." Like, why is the entire industry like ganging up on this guy? Like, it's crazy. Anyway, so that's the weekend. Like, shout out to the weekend. No, no problems with weekend. I love the weekend and everything. But I just, I don't know. I just don't think that he needed to do that. He should have done that on his own album. Like, I just don't understand why he's getting on future that's my own thing you got to beef with drake like why do you got to jump on future and metro's album do it on your own album um all right next let's go with um asap rocky's uh diss track which is i think is even worse <laughs> than than the weekends let me tell you why well let me read it to you and then let me tell you why i think it's so horrible so he goes um i smash before your birth son actually hold on let me get one that actually uh, there's another one here. Just I want the line before that. So he says, um, "N words, N words in they feeling over women. What you hurt or something? I smash before your birth, son. Flacco hit it first, son. Still don't trust you. Always us, never them. Heard you dropping your latest ish. Funny how it came and went. Ha ha ha. What? <laughs> like." First of all, let's address like the small little thing. Like none of Drake's albums came and went. Okay. I, not everything he dropped is classics for all my dogs. Okay. Wasn't a classic. It didn't come and went a B. Um, okay, fine. Uh, we still don't trust you. Uh, something about their women. Okay. That's a uh, waste of time. C. And most importantly, ASAP is saying, which is very disrespectful. I'll give him that. But he's saying, I smashed before you birthed son. smash hit it first son. So he's basically saying that he slept with Drake's baby mama before him. But, yo, you can't say that if we all know that Drake was with Rihanna. So if, if it's a diss to Drake that you were with his baby mama before him, then it's more embarrassing because Drake was publicly with your girl before you and you are married to her drake didn't marry his baby mama and you're married to rihanna and you got two kids so why would you choose that as your as your line to go at drake like wow you you hit his baby mama before him like who who didn't we all know that she's not like an angel out here like um i don't know if she was on only fans but she was she was a dancer i i oh yeah so she was in um uh yeah she was in porno movies like bro she was in porn like that's you're not really dissing drake saying wow you hit a porn star that drake accidentally got pregnant it's not like drake wiped her down and he was in love with her like she was a porn star drake slept with her he had he had her uh she had his baby accidentally we all know he took two or three dna tests that's why we didn't know about his son right away so like okay you slept with drake's baby mama but drake was publicly with rihanna they have songs together like basically love songs together and you married her and have two kids with her like and there's no there's no disrespect that you are with rihanna i totally love rihanna and i totally even love asap rocky like i totally this i just as like as a as a, like a as a i don't know like as an advisor i would just not advise asap rocky to do that i think that was just a dumb diss because you look ridiculous because you're with drake's ex-girl so that was just horrible um what else all right so then J. Cole was on Red Leather. Now, um, <laughs> we all know, like, to be on an album like this, you got to give permission, right? Um, so why, if if on volume one, Kendrick is dissing, Kendrick is dissing you and Drake, then why would you give permission for Metro and Future to put you on volume two? Uh, the only thing, the only thing that I could think of, the only thing I could think of, is is that look albums are done months in advance so maybe future and and metro came to cole and said hey we're making an album we want you to be on it drake um sorry cole gave in his verse signed permission for them to use his verse etc and then he didn't know that obviously volume one was going to have a, a kendrick diss on it dissing him so it could have been where metro and future set cole up but 
if that was the case, then when Kendrick, um, when Kendrick's like that came out, Cole should have been like, yo, I know you guys are, might drop a volume two, or I know that you guys have extra songs in the cut. Just want to let everybody know, I gave a verse to this project and it might come out, but I just want to know, I just want to let you guys know that I did, I, I had, I gave in this verse or I signed the, um, the, the rights for them to use the verse before I knew any of this. Then it would have saved them. So I think it's, I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm just saying that could have been possible. You know what I mean? But he could, he should have been smart enough to let us know that before Metro and, and, and Future put this out. Now he looks like he's switching sides, which he could have been switching sides. Maybe this week he handed them reverse and he wants to go after Drake. There was no diss in there, but yo, that was just, again, that's a dumb move on Cole. If it, if it happened before, that you knew that there was a diss track. Once a diss track came out, you should have let us know. Hey, by the way, Future and Metro set me up. I didn't know about this. And so that is stupid. And then if if you just gave a verse in now after they did th this Jew on volume one and now you're on volume two and you're not dissing Kendrick back, then you look stupid. So Kendrick, uh, Cole just looks dumb on this. Like it's just, there's no way out of him for that. Um yeah, and that's it. All right, so those are the three. Like I said, Charlemagne, that was uh, the clip from Charlemagne. No one's even talking about it. That's just me. You know, I'm a big Charlemagne fan. But yeah, Charlemagne on Brilliant Idiots was saying that there shouldn't be a big three. There should be a Fantastic Four, and Future should be part of the Fantastic Four. And then he said, well, now Cole's not in it. Maybe can, uh, Future should be one. May, uh, future should be two, and he could be even number one because there's a lot of people that want to be like Future. That's fine for Charlemagne to have that have that opinion that's no problem but um yeah that's that's you know like, geez. they're just they just use that as as um as a way to just further dig on drake because we all know that charlemagne is a bigger kendrick fan than he is drake he doesn't really love drake that much so those are the four people on this album you know, Cole and Charlemagne indirectly going at Drake and then um, ASAP Rocky and The Weeknd going at Drake. Um, couple of things to note. Um, this is, this was um, Future and Metro just trying to get us to stream their album. Because when it dropped at midnight, I literally had my title open, um, the title app, and it, it showed up. I was uh, watching academics and if you go into the credits, cause I wanted to go right away to see the features, right? Cause I know future and Metro are not going to um, diss them, but I thought maybe push was on or maybe Kendrick. So I went right away to see the features and nobody was featured. Even if you go into the writing credits, the weekend is not there. Cole is not there. ASAP Rocky's not there. So what that tells me is that, on stream, I know on contracts, they're there and they're getting their credit, but on streaming service, they want you to go and click through every single song because every time they click on something, they get paid. So a week from now, well, no, so it's Friday on Tuesday, you're going to hear, yo, Metro and future volume two, we still don't trust you sold 250,000, uh, units or 300,000, wh uh, whatever the number is. But really, they didn't sell that. They actually just streamed that all because they had us clicking through each one. And then on Billboard, it's going to be like, yo, there's top 10 songs are in Billboard are from Metro Boomin and Future. And then people are going to be like, wow, they're in the top 10. Wow, they're in the number one album. Let me go back and listen to it. Like, yo, they're playing games with us. They're playing games. This is all games. It's, it's all a game for them to make money, for Spotify, all these streaming services to make money. And we got had. I got had because I stayed up almost all night <laughs> listening to this, uh, listening to this stuff, researching it. Um, and they won. Hat off to them. I take my hat off to them because because it worked. Um, and then once all these records are broken, people who are not like me or you who is an enthusiast, they're going to hear, oh, this album is number one. Oh, this album sold 300 units. And then they're going to go back and listen to it and be like, wow, this album is not all that great. It's all hype. It's all beef. Um, I'm going to talk about that later with Chris Brown and, and Quavo. Like, I just feel like that's the marketing campaign right now. It's get the streamers, get the bloggers, get all of us hype, thinking Drake, Kendrick, whatever, and then let's milk it as much as possible. And I don't mind it. I'm just saying this is where we're at. Just at least know that that's what we're getting. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the game right now. 
Um, it's like soap opera hip hop. And um, hey, it's it's all good. You know, it, it got me interested. But just to let you guys know, that's where we are right now. Soap opera hip hop. Um, my overall review on the album. Uh, look, I've only listened to it once. I was listening to it with um, academics back and forth. He was like going through um, things. Um, uh, then I listened to it kind of on my own. I haven't fully digested it. It's not a horrible album, but it's not a classic. It's not amazing. It kind of just seems like it was just, you know, leftover tracks from the original album. And, and that was it. It's really just what, what more Drake disses are they going to be? Like it's, that's really what it is. So that's just my opinion on it. That's my whole review of the album. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Send me an email, trend out loud at cfqr600.com or comment underneath, underneath this video or send me something on social media. I really want to know what you guys think about this album, where we duped, how we've been had. Let me know uh, on any of my social media platforms at trend out loud. Let me know. OJ Simpson passes away at 76 years old following a battle with cancer. All right, like I said, most of you have already known by now or must have heard right now that this happened yesterday, I think around 10, 11 o'clock. So it's been, you know, close to 24 hours now. Um, but like I said at the top of the show, let's talk about the reaction of um, some people being happy that he's passed away. Um, before we even get into that, I just want to send my condolences on, on behalf of the Trend Out Loud podcast staff and CFQR600.com and 600 AM. Uh, send our condolences to the Simpson family. Just want to put that out there. All right, let's move on. So I'll read you the story. It says, the OJ Simpson family released a statement on Thursday announcing that the former NFL star passed away April the 10th following his battle with cancer. Um, I had no idea that OJ was even sick and he had cancer. Um, I always catch clips of Cameron and Mace's um, podcast, and he's like a co-host or a guest co-host. And he's always there, like, talking about sports, talking about people. I never got any sort of inclination that he was sick or he didn't look sick or anything. But they're saying a battle with cancer. So he must have had this battle, must have been having this battle. I'm sure Cam and Mace probably knew about it. But I guess he just didn't want to disclose it to anybody. Or maybe I didn't know, but I mostly know about these things. So, yeah, I think that he kind of, like, hid it from people. But, uh, like I said, <laughs> what I find... A little sad is like the reaction. And I understand just for some of you who might not know who OJ is, I'm sure most of you do. But for those of you who don't know, OJ Simpson was accused of murdering his ex-wife and her, I think it was her best friend and maybe was like alleged boyfriend that they were having an affair. Anyways, OJ was convicted, oh, not sorry, he wasn't convicted. I don't know if I said convicted. Sorry, it's Friday. I'm just excited for the weekend. Hold on. Um, not that he was convicted. He was on trial. And then he was found not guilty, okay? So he was on trial. He was accused of murder. He was on trial, and he got found not guilty. A lot of people feel like he beat the system. A lot of people feel like he got away with murder, which happens every day. But because this was like the trial of the century, it was dubbed like, you know, the biggest court case of all, like Johnny Cochran, um, R.A.P. Johnny Cochran. Um, uh, yeah, like he was known as like the lawyer that could get you off of murders. Actually, Diddy, when Diddy had a case like 10 years after that, I can't remember what the case was for, but then um, Diddy hired Johnny Cochran and it was like, if if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Really what it was, was that the prosecution really uh, had a, didn't do a great job of pre uh, prevent, uh, presenting their case. So everybody feels like he got out, got off with murder. So that's why a lot of people are happy now because they're like, finally, he got his day. But what I find like, just, I find a little bit cold about the situation is a, I think maybe it was five or 10 years later, OJ Simpson actually got found guilty of like robbing somebody in Vegas. And he spent, I think, like 12 or 13 years in jail or at least 10 years in jail. So people are like, you see, that's karma. You got away from murdering your ex-wife and now you're in jail. So it's like, I think that should have been the, the like, okay, fine. We celebrate that he's in jail. But I just don't understand how you celebrate somebody's death. Like, that's a little cold to me. Like, that's still death, you know? Um, and I was thinking about it, like writing the story or preparing for the story, like, would I celebrate, like, if somebody murdered somebody in my family, would I celebrate their death? And it's never happened, so I really don't know. But I just don't think I would ever celebrate 
someone's death. Like if like, you know what I mean? Like I understand like not having any remorse or not feeling sad. I just don't know if I would like celebrate it. That's what I find a little bit like odd. But um, anyways, I'll read to you some reactions that I found online. So OJ Simpson trends following his passing. Social media users share mixed reactions. Um, somebody, I don't know who this person is, but said R.A.P. Juice, the reaction from the O.J. Simpson verdict still is one of the wildest things ever. Okay, so then now, uh, Jamel Hill, who is a, um, a reporter, a former reporter on ESPN, she said, I'm sure people on this app will be very responsible with the news that O.J. Simpson has died. Okay, she's being sarcastic. All right, um, Blake... Uh, Blake Elsom wrote, R.A.P. Um, R.A.P. O.J. Simpson. I'm glad he is no longer. Uh, I'm, I'm glad he no longer has to live in fear. Um, and that's from a quote that O.J. Simpson said that uh, he wasn't going to go back to L.A. because he might run into the real killer of Nicole. So that again, that's somebody again, kind of like poking fun. Okay. Um, Mark Lamont Hill, former, former CNN correspondent, and I think he has his own show on the, the Greco now or something, but shout out to, um, um, Mark Lamont Hill, um, uh, actually a big fan of his, follow him on Instagram, seen his show. He's actually a professor, really, really smart guy, prominent leader in the black community. Okay. Uh, Mark Lamont Hill, he wrote, OJ Simpson is dead in cap locks. He said, do not make him a hero or a martyr. Okay. Then he goes on to say, O.J. Simpson was an abusive liar who abandoned his community long before he killed two people in cold blood. His acquittal for murder was the correct and necessary result of a racist civil legal system. I'll read that again. His acquittal for murder was the correct and necessary result of a racist criminal legal system. But he's still a monster and he is not a mortar. So there's a lot to unpack in there. I'm not going to dig into it where he's talking about like that. It's, I think he's saying that he's like celebrating the fact that he got away because the court system is racist and they've put a lot of black people away. So it was, I think he's trying to say it was, it was good or not good, but I don't want to put words in his mouth, but kind of, it was a necessary result of, the the race the racist criminal system anyways i'm not going to dissect it because i don't want to put words in his mouth but anyways that's his opinion as you can see he does think that he committed the murder but he's not sorry that he went to jail but he also doesn't want us to feel sorry for him don't make him a hero or don't make him a martyr so that's um uh, mark lamont hill um okay this other god problem child um hello quella i don't know who these people are, but I'm sure they're prominent. That's why um, Shade Room is, is posting who they are. He's the, this person said, I'm sick AF. OJ died without confessing he killed that lady. Now we'll never know. Okay. So that's another person saying, Hey, I'm not too sure. I hate that he died without confessing, thinking that he did, but at, at the same time saying that they'll never know. Um, Antonio, um, Antonio, what's his Antonio? AB from whatever he's playing the Falcons, Antonio, 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 can't remember Antonio's last name, but anyways, his Instagram is AB. You guys know who AB is. He said, um, RAP to the legend OJ. I mean, he's AB is a football player. So OJ was a football player, one of the best running backs to ever be in the NFL. So I guess he's looking at it like as his colleague. Here is the biggest one of them all and who's actually getting a lot, who's actually going to kind of like getting torn up online. Caitlyn Jenner, who is Kris Jenner's ex-husband, now turned female um, or trans, trans woman. She wrote, good riddance, hashtag OJ Simpson. Now, OJ, for those of you who don't know, so Caitlyn Jenner... Sorry, Kim, Chloe, and and Caitlin and Chris, their husband, and their sorry, sorry. Chris Jenner's husband and Kim, Chloe, and 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 um dad was the lawyer for OJ and helped him get off. But Chris and and Chris and um Caitlin were best friends with Nicole. So apparently Chris 
And um, and Caitlin has always hated OJ because they think that they murdered their best friend. If that makes sense to you guys. Google it. It would all make sense for those who don't know. So, yeah, I know it's a tangle web, but that's why Caitlin is putting out good riddance. Um, OJ Simpson, because obviously she feels like OJ murdered Nicole and he got away with it. So she's getting um, a lot of backlash for saying good riddance. And like I said, I really put a lot of thought to it before I jumped on this mic. And I was like, how would I feel if somebody murdered? Like, I just don't know if I would publicly go out there and be like, yeah, good riddance. Like, that's somebody dying. That's death, right? There, he has kids. He has a family. And that family now has to grieve. So to go on Twitter and say good riddance, like I said, I'm not saying that Caitlyn or anybody from the Nicole Simpson family should be sad or should cry or go to his funeral. But I'm just saying publicly to go out on Twitter and almost rejoice about someone's passing, I think that's a little bit tough. But you guys let me know now that for those of you who didn't know all the full story, that's the full story. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you think OJ did it? Do you think he got away with murder? Do you think he was innocent? And how do you feel about him passing away? I'd like to know. Send me an email at trendoutloud, sorry, trendoutloud at cfqr600.com or underneath this video or any of my social handles at trendoutloud. All right, that brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Fans react after they assume Chris Brown is throwing shots at Quavo on his new track, Freak. All right, I swear every day this week, every day, I do, I do a show every day, five days a week, every day there's been a beef with somebody in the music industry. I'm beginning to think like that's the only way that these artists that in hip hop and R&B are putting out songs is they beef with somebody so that people could go online and talk about it, go and stream their song, and then that's how they get downloads. Like Kendrick Lamar, I just told you guys last week, his track, uh, like that, had um, uh, sold a million units. And it seems like this is what's the trend now. This is what you got to do. Um, so I have a clip of Chris Brown's song. Uh, take a listen, and then we'll talk about it after. Hey, now, my old bitches ain't gonna make a sequel. Sipping in 1942, cause I don't do no Quavo. She like Casamigos, not the Migos. I mean, he basically said Quavo's name, so we just basically know that it's Quavo. Um, and for those of you who don't know, he's talking about Karuchi. By the way, shout out to Karuchi, friend of mine. Um, she has shopped at Exclusive City. We have definitely had some conversations, so shout out to um, Karuchi. But, but, um yeah so getting back on track now so yeah i just i don't know about this beef i don't know if chris is just doing this to like sell some units or he's still beefing with quavo like is karuchi never supposed to date anybody in the industry i mean she's in the industry she's around these people like i just i don't understand like i just i don't understand what the whole thing of like you're gonna beef with the dude like chris beef with um drake because he went out with rihanna after i mean they made up but i mean yo Karuchi is in the industry and she's going to be around other rappers. So you're going to hate any rapper that talks to Karuchi for the rest of your life. Like, this is crazy. So I guess he hates ASAP Rocky because he married Rihanna. Like, it's like it's nuts. Like, let's say you're in high school and you go out with a girl in your high school. Like, if somebody else goes out with her, you're going to hate that guy. Now, now, hold on. I just want to, I just thought about something. Maybe Chris and Cravo were boys. And if they were really tight, then I can understand. But from what I know, like, Maybe I don't know. Maybe they were boys. Anyways, let me go on to reading what's going on. Um, anyways, I'll read uh, three tweets. He said, uh, Chris Brown really dissed Quavo and the Migos on his new album, 1111 Deluxe. Somebody else, uh, Shu Van XL wrote, Lord, please let Quavo respond so we get Chris Brown. So we get rapping Chris Brown. Uh, that's funny, actually. I do actually really love when Chris Brown raps as well, too. And then uh, Johnny B wrote, that Chris Brown versus Quago beef fit to be fire. It's really about uh, this really about to be summertime heat. So that's what it is, man. Um, actually, here also, too, let me read a little bit of a story. Uh, Chris Brown dropped the deluxe version of his 1111 album. And one of the many songs that has earned some buzz is his song Freak, which features Lil Wayne, Jonah Lucas, and T Grizzly. Fans suspect that CB could be taking some shots at Quavo on the record. Take a listen and let us know your thoughts. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's pretty clear. But, yeah, Chris Brown, Quavo are beefing. One more beef to, 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 to have to follow up on and let you guys know about. Yay, yay for me. All right, in our second quick story, 
Jeezy seeks primary custody of his two-year-old daughter with Jeannie Ma amidst their divorce. Okay, I never saw this coming, man. When Jeannie Ma and Jeezy were getting married and when they're having a baby, they were on every talk show talking about love, talking about how to navigate, how much they love each other, blah, blah, blah. This is turning into like one of the nastiest divorces in the industry. It's crazy. Um, anyways, I'll read to you a little bit of the story. It looks like things are still being hashed out between Jeezy and Jeannie Ma's uh, divorce uh, as their divorce battle continues. Now Jeezy is seeking a change in their custody agreement regarding their two-year-old daughter. According to documents attained by TMZ, Jeezy is asking the judge to toss out their current custody agreement as he seeks primary custody of their baby girl. Jeezy said he first agreed to move to the basement of their family home during their, their, during their breakup. However, once Jeannie moved out, she took their daughter with her. Jeezy alleges that Jeannie's mother and brother primarily take care of their daughter and that Jeannie's traveling schedule isn't good for their child. He reportedly accused Jeannie of preventing his time with his daughter for, for the past two months. Jeezy feels their daughter would have more stability if he had primary physical custody of her. Ugh, it's just always sad to see like when there's a baby involved, especially like a little child like that at two years old. They don't even know what's going on. I'm sure at that age, you want both your parents. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I could just assume. So uh, yeah, like I said at the top, man, really sad to see these two having such a, a bitter breakup. A little part of me feels like, of course, he wants her for... Um, for her stability, but I'm sure also too, it's the money as, as the baby is with um, primarily with the mom, you got to pay more. So I think this might be a money move, but I do know that Jeezy is on his healing process. Um, and he's just all over overall, just try to be a better human uh, right now. I remember him on that breakfast club interview. If you guys haven't seen it, go listen to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's just out here trying to be a better person. He's not trying to be a better dad. So I believe him when he says that he wants stability for his daughter. All right. This brings us to speed news. Ring my bell. And only chopper post this on Twitter. I understand being in love with myself as a black man is so rare to the point. Some people trying to put the homosexuality jacket on my name, but all due respect. I love all but my intimacy lies only with women or lies with women only. Uh, this comes as a result of uh, a song, I think, that he put out. Um, the story says, Enderly Chopper shares, shares a message about his sexuality as he seemingly addresses backlash about his new track. Uh, I don't know if I can say this on, on the radio. Um, slut me out can you say slut on the radio anyways <laughs> i guess the owners will let me know but uh yeah slut me out um i haven't listened to the song i just i don't want to hear it actually <laughs> um but uh yeah so apparently um actually you know what i did hear a little clip i did hear a little clip and there's too much swearing by the time i bleeped it out i wouldn't even be able to play it for you guys on the radio so uh yeah uh so he's basically coming out it's just kind of like a freaky song and there's maybe like some some suggestions in there that he might just be a little extra freaky um, and that's just that's just rappers being rappers in 2024. But he came out and to let you guys know that he is not gay. He loves all, but uh, his intimacy only lies with women. All right. In our second speed story, Usher reveals Chili was his first celebrity crush. Um, OK, for those of you who know Usher and know his story with TLC and, and Chili, we all knew that. But thanks for letting us know, Usher. Here's a clip. Take a listen. My first celebrity crush was Chili. I think I was 11, 12, something like that. Okay, I guess I see what he's saying now that he liked her since he was 11 or 12. Like, okay. Uh, we do know that there was like a big, I think there's a big, pretty big age gap between them. I think there's like 10 or 11 years, but Usher went on to date Chili. I think they even lived together. They were in a bunch of each other's videos. They were almost going to get married, but I don't know why they broke up, but Anyways, now I see what he's saying. He's had a crush on her since he was 11 years old. So that's the confession. Shout out to Usher. All right. In our third speed story, we're talking about Usher again. Usher named as Essence Magazine's final pick for sexiest man of the moment. All right. So this is three days in a row now um, that we've been talking about Essence um, sexiest man of the moment. I still don't understand the title of <laughs> Man of the moment. It makes no sense to me. Normally, it's sexiest man of the year or man of the year or at least month. Like, give him a calendar, like, month. Like, man of the moment. What does that mean? Tomorrow, you ain't the sexiest man anymore? 
Anyways, um, the first one was Damson Idris. Second one was Russell Wilson. And now I guess the final one is Usher. So shout out to Usher. Uh, Essence Magazine has announced their final pick for Sexiest Man of the Moment. And the title goes to none other than Mr. Raymond, who has been out here killing the game for years. As previously reported, Damson Idris, Russell Wilson were named the first two picks by the magazine. Again, no explanation what this means, but hey, shout out to Essence and shout out to the three winners. And and how do you submit for that? Like, why wh- why aren't I part of this? Like, I want to be part of the sexiest man at the moment. Actually, I'm joking. All right. Could we delete this? All right. In our fourth speed story, Nicki Minaj brings out JT, Bia, Katie Got Bands, Malibu, Mitch, and uh Ak- akbar v to perform super freaky girl the queen's remix um okay okay i guess that's really just a story oh yeah so this uh, it was in boston so as you all know i've reported a couple of times we've talked about the Nicki minaj tour it's the largest grossing female rapper tour in history she's breaking all kinds of records i love to see this i love to see when Nicki uh supports other up-and-coming female rappers so that's really good everybody's always saying that how you know nikki is not supportive and she's difficult to work with blah 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 um so it's nice to see her support all these women i mean some people are saying that she's supporting like people that are not threatening to her and why isn't she you know she has her beef with um with lotto of course you guys remember a couple of months ago her beef with megan the stallion she's still cool with ice spice if i don't if i have if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, I think she's still cool with Ice Spice. But yeah, they say that, you know, Nicki Minaj will, you know, of course, she'll friend up, you know, people who are literally on the come up who are not threatening to her. But anybody that's threatening that actually has like a platinum album out, you know, she doesn't like them. But but let's stay. Let's keep it positive And shout out to Nicki for bringing the girls on your tour and shining some light on female hip hop. Shout out to Nicki. All right. In our fifth and final speed story. Video services of academics practicing his boxing skills. All right, so that head title is a little, um, head title, that um, title is a little bit misleading. He's not practicing his boxing. He's, uh, it looks like like he's at a studio or something, and he's kind of like, I think they're more like play fighting with somebody else who's ever in the studio. Uh, for those of you who want to see the video, go on my YouTube page at Trend Out Loud, and you'll see it. Uh, yeah, he's not practicing. He's not like in a ring, in a boxing ring, like working out. It's like, you know, somebody else is probably like, yo, what? Let's throw some hands. So they put on headgear and they're boxing. But what's actually good, people are hating on him, but I, I box actually. So he's actually not bad, you know, cause academics is not really athletic. You know, he's, he's big and he's short. Um, but he's, he got some punches in and, um, you know, he has a little bit of a chin. He, he took some punches. I think it's around, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds. Then he puts his hands on his knees. He's like, yo, I'm burnt. I'm burnt. So I'm surprised he even lasted uh, that long. And I'm surprised he got in some punches. Like he did all right. So shout out to academics. All right. This brings us to question of the day. Which fictional city would you choose to live in and why? Okay. I thought this was really funny. Um, somebody wrote, any answer other than Wakanda should be deleted. That's hilarious. Um, Donnie McKay, 82 wrote Bel Air. I didn't even think about that, but hilarious to live in Bel Air, but actually hold on a second. Hold on. Time out. That's not fictional. It has to be fictional. It has to be a made up place. Bel Air is a real place. Does this person really not know that Bel Air is a real place in LA? They really thought Will Smith went to live in a fictitious city. That's funny. Um, all right. Somebody wrote Wisteria Lane. I think that's from, um, what's that show? I think it was from, uh, Desperate Housewives. Um, so Wisteria Lane, a lot of these places, I won't know, like somebody wrote, uh, Gioa city. I don't know where that is. Sorry. Um, all right. Somebody said in the sewers where the ninja, where the ninja turtles were, were and eat pizza every day. That's hilarious. Somebody said, not sure where, but definitely not Gotham. Hilarious. Uh, somebody wrote King's landing. Oh, where's that from? Ooh. I know, I remember hearing that, but I don't know exactly where that's from. The real underscore badman wrote uh, Zamunda. Shout out to, um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's the Eddie Murphy movie? Oh my gosh, Zamunda. Eddie Murphy, is it coming? Yeah, coming to America. They lived in Zamunda, which was supposed to be Africa, but it was like, I guess it's a fictitious land. So yeah, Zamunda, that's funny. 
Uh, Brendan Rainwater underscore wrote Nellyville. That's hilarious. Shout out to Nelly. Of course, somebody said Wakanda, of course. Uh, Fitness Baby underscore 2K24 wrote Halloween Town. I don't even know where that is. Gigi McGuire said it's always a beautiful day in Zamunda. Um, somebody said Springfield and hang with Homer. I didn't even think about Springfield. That's really, that's a good one. Springfield. Uh, Marvel, ver- Marvel's, ver- somebody said Marvel's version of NYC. Don't know where that is. Somebody said Bikini Bottom because I love to laugh and know every day um, I'll be C-T-F-U-P. I don't know what that sounds for. But is Bikini Bottom, I feel like that has something to do with um, with a Barbie movie, which I didn't see. Actually, I do want to watch Barbie, Barbie movie. Um, nothing to do with this, but I think I'm going to watch that this weekend. I actually heard it was good. Oh, yeah. Somebody said Bedrock. That's a good one. The Flintstones. Um, or Orbit City. I bet you Orbit City is probably the Jetsons. Um, somebody said uh, Gotham City because I'm Batman. All right. Let me find two more good ones. Somebody said Wakanda or P-Valley. Oh, I know I've heard of P-Valley before. Not sure where. Somebody wrote Whoville. Oh, I know Whoville. Whoville is from somewhere. I just can't remember. Oh, Whoville. I think that was like a network show or whatever. Um, anyways, if you guys know, if the ones that I'm not remembering now, if somebody could put in a comment section below, if you're on YouTube, please help me out with these. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, Virginia River, Wakanda. Um, yeah, that's basically about it. All right. So let me tell you, uh, where I would live. I mean, there's not too many places out there, but I would say Wakanda. That's, that's my answer. I would love to live in Wakanda. That place looks dope. But honorable, uh, mentioned Zamunda. Zamunda looks like a cool place too. All right. This brings us to our second question of the day. What's the weirdest thing you've ever done for the gram? All right, I, I wanted to pick this one because I know a lot of people are not going to tell the truth. So I wanted to see who in the comments section was actually going to tell the truth. Um, Saint, jo- jo- Saint Jomo wrote, for a gram or for the gram? Okay, that was hilarious, actually. Um, Tevin92BK wrote, the answer for a lot of you should be defending celebrities that you don't know. Okay, that's... I didn't look at it that way, but it's like, what is, what's the weirdest thing you've ever done? Like, anyways, let me, let me just go to the rest of the answer. Um, pretend I was happy. There you go. That's honest. That's honest. I'm sure a lot of you out there have done that when you're not really happy, but you just do it to save face. You're going to post something. Um, I choose me underscore 24 wrote post my every move when I was younger. Now I understand real G's move in silence. Pretty funny. RB22, here we go. This is some honest. Got an outfit for a pick. Some some of y'all out there be going to get outfits just so that you could post up. Don't lie. CCT underscore DT wrote, not a thing for this app. I'm not one of those people. Okay, I believe not everybody would do something like that. T Swag, T Swaggy G wrote, absolutely nothing. I'm not a clout chaser. Okay, I wouldn't say it's a clout chaser, but anyways, I'll leave my opinion to last. Sancha82 wrote, drop down, I got my eagle on, girl. Shout out, shout out to Nelly again. Nelly's getting a lot of references out here. I am Hector Perros wrote, reels of me in my underwear got the most views. I'm a professional. I'm here for it. It's funny. Samantha8285 wrote, I used to shake my booty for attention, but now I'm grown and don't do it anymore. Zuzu underscore 22 wrote, I took a picture with a prostitute to pretend I had a girlfriend. Ouch, but at least he's being honest. I don't know if he's trolling, but uh, at least he's being honest. All right, I'll read one last one to you. Uh, Brandon Smith 82 said, I faked one time going out shopping like I was buying a bag, buying, uh, spending a bag on a new on new outfit uh, to change my wardrobe. And I actually left without buying a thing, but nobody knew. See, that's being honest. Um, all right, so. One of the weirdest things I ever did, I'll just be transparent, um, I actually pretended once that I was going out to a club and I never really went. <laughs> uh, this was one of the times, something like four or five years ago, where I was just like, no, I really, really didn't want to go out. I remember I was in Toronto, and um, but I had been like posting, and I was like, yo, I'm going to go out like the next... I think I'm going out the whole weekend or if it was caravan a weekend or something. And I'm like, okay, yo, I don't want to, um, I don't want to like 
you know, disappoint my followers. So I literally got dressed, went to a club, went in the club, took a video in the club. And I was like, yo, I'm going home to my bed. I was just tired. But I literally left my house to go to the club and did it. And I was like, the next day, I was like, yo, I cannot believe I did that. And I literally just deleted it. But that's the one time um, I ever did that. I was just tired man it was t- that's what it was i was tired and i said yo i'm going out all weekend i think it was like the fourth or fifth day and i was just yo i was so hung over i just couldn't do it i think it was probably like a sunday or a monday and i was like yo i can't do this and instead of instead of not going i literally got dressed got into an uber went to the club and also too the club was super whack i'm sure if and i told myself yo if the club was good I'll probably end up staying, but I went there and it was whack. I was like, yo, I'm just going to stay home. So at least I don't feel so bad because I knew that I would have stayed if it was good, but the club was whack. I was like, I, was, I went home. I literally stayed there for two minutes and left. But uh, anyways, that's the weirdest thing. Don't act like I've never done stuff for the grind, man, especially like you influencers out there. Stop it. You know that we do things um, for posts and for views. Like it's, it's part of our job. So stop it. All right. This brings us to sports news. Draymond Green was on his podcast and he said, Bronny will 100% be a a successful NBA player. Uh, I have a clip. Take a listen. Bronny 100% will be a successful player in the NBA. At worst, Bronny is an NBA level defender that can knock a shot down. All right. Let's take a little, uh, a few things into perspective. Um, Draymond and uh, LeBron are really good friends. Very, very good friend. So Draymond is super close to Bronny, I'm sure. Kind of like an uncle, godfather kind of figure. One. Two, um, uh, LeBron and Draymond have the same agent, Rich Paul. Shout out to Rich Paul. Really good dude. Um, So they have the same agent. And I'm assuming when Bronny comes into the league, his agent is going to be Rich Paul. So that's, you know, what is Draymond supposed to say? He cannot actually talk objectively about somebody who's on his agent's roster and also about somebody who's like his godson. So of course he's going to vouch. There's been a lot of talk about Bronny entering the draft this year. We, I believe that um, the Lakers are going to pick him. I said this, I think last week or maybe it was early this week. Uh, LeBron James wants to play with his son. And if, If Lakers don't pick him and another team picks him, LeBron is going to go and go uh, and be with that other team. LeBron has all his accolades. He's the big, uh, the the, uh, NBA player with the most points. He has all his rings. He's arguably the GOAT, not my GOAT. Uh, Jordan is my GOAT. We all know that. But we won't get into that conversation. LeBron knows he's not going to win any more rings with LA. He just wants, before he retires, he wants to play with his son. Um. I was watching somebody the other day and they made a good point where Giannis Antetokounmpo's brother is on Milwaukee Bucks because Giannis wants him there. He's never started. He's never played a game, but he's there. He helps him play around. He helps him coach or whatever. Lakers are going to draft Bronny. He's going to be on the team. He might not even play or they might put him in kind of like, you know, when like at the fourth quarter when there's whatever, when they're in the lead by 20 or 25 or when they've lost by 20 or 25 and they put in their bench players, that's what it might do. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's happened before. And it's not to say where it's like, this guy's a horrible player. He did make it onto the Trojans on a college team. So um, I don't know if he's going to be a 100% successful NBA player. I don't know about that. I don't follow it that much. The the, the games that I have seen him play in, he looks I I don't know if once Bronny, once LeBron leaves, if we're if we're gonna watch Bronny and if he's gonna have a career or the teams are gonna keep him on and he's gonna have a career until he's thirty five or forty, that's what Draymond's saying. I don't know, but they're definitely gonna draft him. Um, but I don't know if he's gonna be a successful basketball player. That's that's just my opinion. You guys, let me know what you think. Send me an email, uh, turn out loud at cfqr six hundred dot com or um, at the bottom of this video or on my YouTube or on my social media channels. All right, that's it. It's a wrap for your boy. The weekend is here. Thank you for hanging out with me all week. I hope you guys enjoyed all the shows. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Be safe out there. Thanks for hanging with me. Oh, and and I always got to remind you, I always got to remind you, if you're uh, watching this on YouTube or listening to this on a podcast platform, 
please check me out on cfqr600.com anywhere in the world weekdays from monday to friday from 11 to 12 you can hear this podcast while i mix in 90s and 2000s hip-hop and r&b it's a really good hour throwback while you're hearing the news uh from uh the new the entertainment news from the day and vice versa, if you're listening to this on CFQR600.com or 600 AM in Montreal, and you can't always listen uh, from 11 to 12, you can always catch this show on my YouTube page or on any podcast platform. Just search Trent Out Loud. Have a good weekend, guys. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Trent Out Loud. Peace.